Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and today we have a roundup of sorts. There was a number of announcements at the end of last week about Unreal Engine. I didn't actually cover them at the time. Unfortunately, I got my second jab of vaccination, and this one knocked me on my butt. But I am back, I am feeling better now, and I am keeping you guys up to date in the world of Unreal Engine. And one of the big announcements was Unreal Engine 4.27 Preview 1 was released. Now, the preview release, the first one is always the most interesting, because you get to know what is actually going to be in that release. This is all of the new features come in and then they do several other previews as it becomes more stable until finally 4.27 ships. And got to warn you right up front, 4.27 is not for production use. This is a, an early beta at this point in time. And I'm actually kind of shocked it happened, to be honest, because I wasn't really expecting uh, 4.27 or 4. anything release at all because of this guy. Uh, announced the end of May. What you see here, this is Unreal Engine 5. And I got to admit, after going to Unreal Engine 5, going back to Unreal Engine 4.2 blah is a tricky thing. By the way, this is the um, subway level from this month's giveaway. I'm going to feature two of uh, uh, this month's free stuff in this particular video. This is one thing, so you can download this completely free. It is a, a post-apocalyptic subway scene, a very cool setting. And this is Unreal Engine 5, which is where I thought we were going from now. I didn't think we were going to get new Unreal Engine versions in the 4.2 series. I thought the next release was going to be 4. Oh, sorry, 5.0. But nope, we have a 4.27 Preview 1. And this is another asset, by the way, from that project. Uh, this, this month's free assets. Uh, this is the stylized forest asset. So if you're curious, uh, I will link those in a few minutes. If you want to go ahead and download those, you have the rest of June to grab those until the first Tuesday of July. So anyways, what is new in this release? Well, we're going to go through the release notes in detail, but I'm going to show you one of the things I think is probably one of the bigger features, at least in the world of game development, because a lot of the features in Unreal Unreal Engine 4.27 are around Unreal Engine's push into cinematography. So you know how they're getting more into TV production, commercials, and that kind of stuff? A lot of the features are around that. But one definitely new thing for the world of game development is available here in plugin form. Let's go here to the plugins. I already enabled it because you have to do a reboot every time you um, turn something on or off in a plugin. But what we have now is enhanced input. You'll notice here it is a beta, a version one beta, uh, and it is now enabled for me. So you can just come on in here if you want to check this out. You basically just go um, plugins, search for input, turn on enhanced input, and then restart. Now, once you've done that, you're going to find that you can actually create a couple of new um, assets. And you're going to come in here and you're going to go to the input category. You're going to see you have input actions and input mapping context. We're going to create an action and we're going to create a mapping context. Now there's an interesting bug in mapping, mapping context. I'll show you in a second. Uh, but first we'll start with the input action. So this is where you could define uh, an action type. So you see here, is it consumed by input? Uh, trigger when paused, reserve also if the game is in a pause state, does this action happen or not? And then you can pick the types of things. So you can have it be a controller up, controller down. And this is a way of mapping multiple different inputs to a same set of control. Every single game engine has this functionality now. Godot has it, Unreal Engine has it, and nicely now, um, sorry, Unity has it, and now Unreal Engine has it. So what you do is you set up, so say you want to have, you know, a vertical up and down or two-dimensional uh, along a certain axis, you can do that. Uh, you can set up triggers for them, so on pressed, on released, on tapped, and so on. And then you can also set up modifiers. So you can do things like create dead zones, uh, smooth them out, swizzle them, translate it to world space, and so on. Uh, so you create the first thing, go ahead and save that. So there's our new input action. So this might be, say, uh, up, down, action, like so. And then we get into the input mapping context. And I'm going to warn you, this is going to be a little hard to read because of the bug I mentioned. So I'm going to open that one up. Oh, it worked this time. Huh. Last time, uh, this was in uh, high DPI settings, so it was really, really tiny. I'm not sure what changed there, uh, but that is nice to see. So here you see you've got the new input mapping here, and you create a new mapping, and we can set our up-down action, so that's what we're going to map to. And now what we can do is map input devices to that action. So for so example here, we can have set up a key, and then come here, so I don't want to do left mouse button. Okay, let's go back to key. All right, so click there, and the up arrow. Up. Okay, and the interface for doing this is a little screwy, by the way, but you can also drop down and pick anything you want. So you see here we have a number of different uh, actions that we can map here. I'm going to finish with the key, and then we'll come on back. So we could do here uh, what triggers this action, and we go ahead and say 
All right, uh, released. So when you release the up key, the this action, the up down action will fire. So what you're gonna do here is you can map multiple input actions to the same device. So let's do head another one here. So let's go down there. And here we can go ahead, we'll drop in. So this is mapping to the up action again. And here we'll drop down the list and we'll say in this case, uh, Xbox One, no, no, uh, gamepad, uh, left thumb, Y. All right, there you go. So the Y axis up, we'll do it. And we can set some modifiers up for it right here. So uh, we could do it, like set up a dead zone in for that one, for example. And then you drill into that and you can do uh, settings for that particular thing. And this is a new input system uh, for uh, mapping multiple control schemes to a single set of actions. You can create multiple actions that go in here. It's a really neat and handy setup. Now, by the way, if you wanna go ahead and use this, you do have to turn the plugin on. But after that, you also have to go into input and you go to your project settings. And you go on down to the input section of that, so right here. And then what you're going to need to do is change the default player input class from player input to enhanced player input. And you have to change the default input component class to the enhanced input component. So that I think is the biggest new feature for game developers. It is in beta only, but I can definitely see that one really changing the way people handle input in their games. So that is a nice thing to change. So here we have the announcement over on the Unreal Engine blog. You're gonna see here just by their summary, the majority of things here, so new workflow for in-camera VFX, for filmmakers, movie render queue, stuff for OpenXR, that's VR and AR together and combined, and then stuff for Datasmith. Datasmith is like their CAD integration stuff for like if you're doing uh, you know, real estate rendering in Unreal Engine. So a lot of the things that we're seeing here aren't really aimed at game developers. But one of the big things we've got here, you're gonna notice this from the thumbnail, is Oodle and Bink. Now Bink was purchased by them. We'll get to that in a few minutes. I've got a linked article. If we can go into more details of that, I already covered that in the past. Uh, but that stuff has all been integrated into this version. Also, it has been integrated into Unreal Engine 5. I think what you're gonna find is everything that gets integrated into 4.27 is also integrated into 5. So if you've just skipped the whole thing and you're just, you're, you're, you're moving forward, you've, you've moved on. If you're an Unreal Engine 5 person like myself, and I gotta admit, when I use Unreal Engine 5, going back to 4.x is hard. So I'm, I'm slowly becoming one of those people as well. Uh, but most of the functionality you're seeing here will also be in 5 or will be full reported to 5 and so on. They're both development branches at this point in time. Now, as I mentioned, earlier on there is a ton of the functionality is around cinematics and virtual production updates a lot of this is very specific to that world so i'm not really going to cover it uh, if that's the world you're in though you're going to find there's a ton of improvements in that area uh, we've got support for geo referencing um UE as lib, uh, you can now build the UE4 runtime as a library and interact with it through a minimal built-in API. That's interesting, actually. That seems to be following suit because uh, Unity as a lib also was released kind of as a recent thing. So if you're kind of using either of the frameworks as like a host for your own application, I can think of one case of something like the core game engine out there is built on top of Unreal Engine. A Unity as a lib or Unreal Engine as a lib is definitely useful. It's amazing when one of them adds something. The other one always follows suit. Uh, then we got, again, some data smith stuff. Again, this is for bringing in CAD type documents or LIDAR point clouds and so on. Uh, if you're recreating world, world, real world stuff, maybe this gets relevant to you, but for the world of game development, for the most part, data smith stuff isn't really that important. So then we get into the gameplay updates. Again, I already uh, showcased the enhanced input. Uh, they mark this as experimental, which is weird because it's actually marked as beta. And in the world of Unreal Engine, Experimental and beta are very different things. Experimental is something that could be thrown away. Beta is generally just pre-production. So it will happen eventually. It just needs to get there. So a lot of things go from experimental to beta stage. I think they just made an error there, to be honest. Um, game features and modular gameplay. This is interesting. Using game features and module gameplay plugin, you can create standalone features or data sets that are easy to add or remove from your project. Plugins keep your code base clean and readable while avoiding accidental interactions or uh, dependencies between unrelated features. This is particularly important when developing live projects products that can change their features over time. So it's a way of basically creating forks of your game's functionality all within the same process. So that, that's a neat one um, there. I, th I think you could potentially do that where you, if you had certain features, like say you did a, a Switch and an Xbox version where Switch might have a uh, different functionality, you could do it in the features and modular gameplay area. But though I think in most cases, those will still be separate projects to be honest.
And then data registries, uh, loading cache global, you struck data based on discovering caching rules you configure. Uh, we've got some updates to mobile, distance field shadows, fast approximate uh, FXAA and TAA, uh, feature now available in the mobile renderer. That's definitely nice. Although uh, temporal anti-aliasing, remember, you know, when they, you look at uh, Unreal Engine in the editor and it's kind of has like the skin crawling effect or like a shimmer or a blink or kind of an annoyance to you. Almost always that's TAA, just one of those things to be aware of. I've never been really huge fan of the way Unreal Engine uh, has implemented TAA, uh, but now it's available on mobile. Uh, so mobile chain improvements to the tool chain. So added support for Visual Studio debugging for Android projects and added Android memory profile support. Uh, the Niagara, their particle effect system got a number of improvements. I'm not going to go into the details of all of those things, but I will of course link to this, um, this post. So if you want to check that out, you can do so. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on, Rad Tools has been fully integrated. Rad Tools has a number of different tools in the suite. They had the Miles Sound System audio stuff, Bink Video Compression, and Oodle, which is kind of like a general compression as well as a networking layer. Uh, those have all been integrated in. Those are in 4.27 and in 5.0. So Oodle Data, the highest, um, fastest and highest data um, compressor for game data out there, uh, is now enabled by default in Unreal Engine, which is really nice. So you get uh, uh, significant significant compression and faster loading for packaged projects. Uh, Oodle textures, again, same thing for texture um, compression, and then Oodle networking for real-time compression of networking traffic. So those things, all of the stuff from Rad Tools are now integrated into this release. Another interesting update is the Path Tracer beta is in there. So uh, Unreal Engine 4's Path Tracer is now moved to beta and is closing the gap with the real-time ray tracing features. It includes physically correct and compromised free global illumination, physically correct refractions, uh, feature complete material with reflections and ref uh, reflections and refractions and super sampling anti-aliasing. Uh, improvements in 4.27 include blah, 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 and blah. Uh, GPU light mass beta improvements. GPU light mass continues to add improvements with features that include support for a wide range of light parameters, baking for level data, level of detail, meshes, and so on. Hair and fur rendering improvements. Uh, XR uh, got some improvements as well. Um, so new features in the OpenXR plugin include stereo layers, splash screens, and motion control visualization. They redesigned the VR template, and VR platforms supported by the template include the Oculus Quest 1 and 2, Oculus Quest with Oculus Link, Oculus Rift S, Valve Index, HTC Vive, and Windows Mixed Reality. So that's the majority of the mainstream desktop and mobile uh, devices out there. Uh, eye tracking foveated rendering experimental. Uh, this is actually kind of interesting. It, it's, it's by focusing the rendering on where your eye actually focuses. Um, it gives you a significant GPU bonus because you're only rendering where the eye focuses on. So it's like the, the edge of your peripheral vision isn't getting rendered. And foveated rendering is an interesting technique. I do find though, at least it might be an implementation specific thing, but some people are more um, susceptible or, or no, that's not the right word. They, they notice it a heck of a lot more. So it's one of those things you're gonna wanna try it yourself if you're working on a VR project, but foveated uh, rendering is in there now. Um, and that's basically the extent of it. So a whole lot of the things here are on probably sides you don't care about. So on the uh, cinematics and on the um, data smith side of things, not really big for you, but there's some really cool stuff in here. Oodle and the rad tools finally being integrated. That is definitely very nice. Um, improvements to the Niagara particle effect system is always nice. And then I like the new input system that you saw in action earlier in this video. So on top of that, Bink Video and Bink Audio are now available in Unreal Engine for free. Um, so those are available via the uh, internal uh, development branch. So if you're using the current version, uh, binary support is available in the 4.27 preview, as well as in the Unreal Engine 5 early access. Uh, so Bink Video is all about compression. You've probably run into Bink Video. It's been used by just about everything out there. Now Bink Audio is interesting because I don't actually remember Bink Audio being a product. I remember Miles Sound System being a product uh, and Bink is compression of all kinds. So I don't know if they've kind of created a new product here or if this is a rebranding of Miles, or if this is something that they're creating themselves, or maybe I just was unaware that Bing Audio was a thing. Uh, but it's a performance-oriented audio, audio codec that's in there as well. So it's nice that the whole uh, purchase of Bink is um, bearing fruit. And interestingly enough, Bink tools are still available for other game engines and licensing and so on and so forth. So if you're using Bink with your custom game engine or another game engine, it continues to work. Uh, so a bit of a roundup. So if you want to learn more about some of the things that happened in the past, I have done uh, stuff on Unreal, uh, sorry, on uh, Game from Scratch news stories. I'll link these all down below. So if you want to learn more uh, about Epic Games acquiring Rad Tools back in January, uh, the Unreal Engine free marketplace content. So what you saw in action here is the stylized forest and the sub underground subway. So the stylized forest, 
Ooh, ooh, ooh. And in Unreal Engine 5, by the way, this works in Unreal Engine 4.2 point whatever. Uh, but here it is in uh, running in Unreal Engine 5, which is also why it's a little bit slower, because I definitely find Unreal Engine 5 is slower. Uh, but uh, that is available as well. And on the topic of Unreal Engine 5, uh, the Unreal Engine 5 early access release also happened as well, which is quite cool. So that is everything that just happened last week. Sorry, I'm a little slow on that. Like I said, uh, the jab put me down a bit, but I seem to be mostly back to normal right now. And by the way, if you are getting the Pfizer vaccine and you're getting shot number two, if shot number one did nothing for you, don't assume shot number two is going to be the same experience because it was not. All right, so that's it. That is Unreal Engine 4.27 Preview 1. Um, the integration of Oodle and Bink Audio and Bink Video. Uh, let me know what you think, anything in there that you really liked. Again, the thing that I really focused on in this video, because I think it's the most important to game developers, is the new enhanced input system. That is now a universal feature of all game engines out there. And it's nice because you can just basically abstract away dealing with UI uh, into a configurable um, kind of tool. But is there something else in here that you found kind of more impressive, more uh, important overall than the new uh, Rad Tools integration or the new input layer? Let me know what you found most impressive of all. Comments down below. And that is about it. Uh, what do you think? Unreal Engine 4.2x. Do, do you like that they're still doing 4.x releases or do you wish they just put all of their focus into 5? I can see value in both because they're going to have to re revert or uh, divert engineering resources to doing a dual branch. Uh, so I, in some ways, would like them just to go all in on 5. But I also know 5 is going to probably be delayed and then delayed and delayed and delayed. Whereas these 4.x releases tend to happen every 3, 4, 5 months kind of thing. So it's probably good to get one or two 4.x releases in in the meanwhile until 5 comes. Otherwise, we end up, you know, waiting forever. But I'd be interested in your opinion. Let me know. Comments down below. And I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.